300 million years ago. Life flourishes in massive tropical swamps where planet Earth is cooking up a surprise. As plants die here, they are buried, compacted, and cooked. Energy created in the Big Bang and radiated by the sun to plants on Earth is now locked away underground as coal, a gift to be opened by human beings millions of years in the future. Two hundred fifty million years ago, an apocalypse unfolds. The biggest spike in volcanic activity since the early days of the planet. The atmosphere is choked with carbon dioxide and the diversity of animal life spawned in the Cambrian explosion is stopped dead in its tracks. More than 70% of all species on Earth go extinct in the worst mass die-off in history, the Permian extinction. Extinction is a recurring character in the story of planet Earth. Five times in the last 500 million years, some cataclysm wiped out the dominant species. It's a reshuffling of the deck that allows new creatures to take hold. New creatures like the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs will reign for the next 160 million years. During that time, the first hardwood forests appear. And after more than four billion years, the moon's gravity finally settles Earth into a 24-hour day. At the start of the dinosaur era, the continents are clustered together into a single landmass we call Pangaea. But now, they start to break apart. Africa separates from South America. The vast Atlantic Ocean opens up, creating what will become one of the defining barriers of human history, the gulf between the old and new worlds. The undisputed stars of the dinosaur era are animals like Triceratops and T. rex. But there are some important creatures scurrying around their feet. If we were to trace our lineage back far enough, we would come to really small shrew-like mammals surrounded by these titans of reptile life. During that time, mammals, we were living on the fringes. We were maybe stealing dinosaur eggs, maybe just eking out an existence. So the dinosaurs kind of held us back. The biggest headline of the history of dinosaurs, which is 160 million years, is that we lost. Mammals lost. We couldn't get much bigger than a small cat. For 160 million years, all the medium-sized, medium-big, big, gigantic, and stupendous animals were dinosaurs for that whole time. They beat us fair and square. But the deck is about to be reshuffled. Sixty-five million years ago, a six-mile-wide object, likely an asteroid, slams into the Earth. A dust cloud blocks out the sun. Temperatures plummet. Every creature on land weighing over 50 pounds goes extinct. The reign of the dinosaurs is over. The greatest gift that the dinosaurs ever gave us was dying. When they went extinct, it gave the mammals time to rise. It doesn't take long after the disappearance of the dinosaurs for the first true primates to appear. Like their later versions, including us, these mammals have evolved forward-facing eyes, allowing for accurate depth perception 
and flexible hands with five digits. They have five fingers, just like us, which means we can grasp things. If you think about other animals that don't have digits organized the way ours are, their ability to hold things, to manipulate objects, is much more limited. 50 million years ago, our primate ancestors are evolving on a planet that is warming. It's so hot, there are jungles at the poles. As the continents drift, the Americas and Africa have almost fully taken shape. But in northern Africa, modern-day Egypt is submerged beneath an ancient sea. On the floor of that sea live small shelled creatures called Nummulites. Their shells, made of calcium and carbon, pile up on the sea bottom over millions of years, where they form into limestone. Limestone that will be used to build the Great Pyramids. If you look closely at the pyramids today, you can still see evidence that these 4,000-year-old monuments are, in fact, made of 50-million-year-old seashells. By 10 million years ago, Earth is morphing into a world most of us would recognize. The Colorado River is carving out the Grand Canyon. Mountain ranges like the Himalayas have arisen. They're so tall, they disrupt weather patterns, setting the stage for a colder planet. The Isthmus of Panama emerges to connect North and South America, cleaving the connection between the Atlantic and the Pacific disrupting ocean currents and tipping the world even more towards an ice age. With the planet getting colder, our primate ancestors hang on in the tropics. But a new creature is coming in that threatens to destroy them. Seven million years ago, our primate ancestors live safely in the trees, but their neighborhood is about to be invaded. This newcomer will have as profound an effect on human history as any other living thing on Earth. It seems almost impossible to believe, but one of the most important things that will lead to the emergence of us is the emergence of grass. The grasslands appear almost simultaneously around the world. We get the African savannas. We get the Eurasian steppe lands. We get the North American prairies. We get the great grasslands of Argentina appearing simultaneously around the world. In Eastern Africa, Grasslands invade the traditional woodland habitat of our ape ancestors. With fewer trees and greater gaps between them, our ancestors have to adapt. Apes have notice that there's more and more apes in the same tree and less and less food, increasing incentives for apes to go from one patch of food to a different one separated by grasslands. Now, one way to do it is to run like hell. <laughs> the other way to do it is to extend one's food sources into the grasslands and seek out the foods that are available there. And so, some apes make the move down into this stark new habitat. It's a landscape better suited to primates that can walk on two legs keeping their heads up above the tall grasses to watch for predators. Standing on two feet is a revolutionary advance because it frees up our hands. Hands we will need to shape human history. Two point six million years ago, 